Good morning everyone and welcome to our worship service this week. I hope that you'll have an enjoyable time worshipping with us uh, today. Uh, this past week the church council considered how we may be able to host a small church service which will be live streamed uh, so those who don't have access to online material can come together and worship. Uh, the plan is to put in place um, a bit of a plan um, and I'll explain that plan in a pastoral letter, uh, probably coming out in the next couple of days. So just watch for that. Uh, and I trust that those who don't have email will help to get out hard copies and deliver them to those uh, who don't. But the basic uh, gist of it is that uh, on the 6th of September, we will be doing a test live stream service to make sure we can get all the technology to work. So no one else will be attending that service except for those who are involved in that live stream. And then if that goes well and the COVID-19 situation stays uh, as it is, then the following Sunday on the 13th, then we will have uh, a, our small group to come together to worship uh, for our first church service in quite a while. This will require there to be enough volunteers to do all the COVID safe roles. So please consider how you might be able to help out. Uh, a list of volunteer roles will be put out by our COVID-19 task group. Today and next week, you can continue to watch uh, the service either on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. by going to ingmuc.online.church or anytime by going to youtube.com and searching for Ingham Church Service. However, once we start live streaming, uh, it is likely that we will be exclusively using our YouTube channel. Uh, and no longer using the uh, .online.church uh, online platform. So stay tuned for more. In, uh, so stay tuned for more in information uh, on this in the coming weeks. But let's now get into our worship service with our call to worship. Psalm 106. When our fathers were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, and they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his namesake, to make his mighty power known. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his counsel. 
In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. Therefore, the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. But he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He caused them to, to be pitied by all who held them in captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, it is so easy to forget you in the busyness of life, but we always need you. We thank you that no matter how poorly we have responded to your love and actions, you always respond to us with compassion. We thank you that you kept your covenant with Israel, even though they did not remember your kindness and rebel, even though they despised the pleasant land and did not believe your promises, and even though they worshipped false gods, causing you to be angry. We thank you for such a great love, which caused you to save them, because you are our Father too. And we can have confidence that you will keep your covenant made with us through your Son, Jesus, and save us when we call out to you. We ask that you would direct our hearts and minds towards you and fill us with your Spirit, bringing refreshing, renewal, peace and joy. You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens. You tell us that you will renew our strength and you promise to give us rest as we come to you. And so we come now to worship you in this place and wherever we are. Amen. We're now going to uh, have some worship singing, so I'm now going to hand it over to our worship team to lead us in our opening bracket of songs. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start today's worship with Shout for Joy and Sing Your Praises to the King.
Let us now come before our God with our prayers of confession. Let us pray. Father, we are sorry for the times we have worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need of you, living independently of your spirit. We are sorry for letting fear and worry control our minds and for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. We are sorry for not following your ways and for living distanced from your presence. We are sorry for being too easily distracted by other things, for not fully recognising what we have so freely been given and all that Christ has done for us. Help us to cease striving and to remember that you alone are God and that we rest in your work. Thank you for the forgiveness we have through your Son, our Lord Jesus, who died for our sins, so that you could pour out your love and mercy and grace upon us. And so we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. If we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just. He will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I declare to you this morning, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We're now going to come to our time for our offering. So if you've got your envelopes, you can bring them there. We'll pray for them. But we're going to pray for however you give your offering. Let's pray. Lord God, help us to never take for granted this huge gift of love you have offered on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. We choose to press in close to you today and to keep you first in our hearts and lives. May we walk in your wisdom and purposes. May we stay strong and true to you. So we offer you ourselves. And with that offering, that part of the provision and abundance we have received from you. We ask for your blessing to be upon the money we give and on our lives, that through our willingness to share our faith with others, many more will come to be a part of your heavenly family. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible reading this morning which will be read for us by Charlotte and Alison. Right, thank you, guys. Today's Bible reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, reading verses 1 to 9 and then 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls again. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of, his, of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what has sown. I 
I hear your hollow laughter Your sighs of secret pain Pretending and inventing Just to hide your shame Plastic smiles and faces Blinking back the teeth Empty friends and places All magnify your fear If you're tired and weary Weak and heavy laden I can understand it feels to be alone I will take your burden If you let me love you Wrap my arms around you Give your heart a hold It hurts to watch you struggle and try so hard to win Trade your precious birthright For candy food and sin Wasting precious moments Restless and confused Building up defense For fear that you'll be used If you're tired and weary We can have you made I can understand how It feels to be alone I will take your birth If you let me love you, wrap my arms around you, give your heart a home, take my yoke upon you, and walk here by my side, let me heal your heartache. Dry the tears you've cried Never will I leave you Never turn away I'll keep you through the darkness And lead you through the day If you're tired and weak Weak and heavy laden I can understand how It feels to be alone I will take your burden If you let me love you Wrap my arms around Give your heart a hold Wrap my arms around you Give your heart a hold As we prepare to hear God's message to us this morning, we're going to sing, So That You Would Come. Let us come and let us sing this song with each other.
today we are beginning to get into our new series on increasing our personal faith sharing. It is my hope that over the coming weeks you will be challenged and encouraged to engage more in sharing of your faith with those you know and meet and to make the sharing of your faith uh, a normal part of your life or an increased part of your life. Today we're looking at understanding a fundamental element which affects how and when you share your faith with the person you're talking to. This fundamental element is a person's heart response or a person's heart's openness to God and the good news of Jesus. I think I may have shared this story with you before, but I think that it is important for today's message. When I went to study to become a minister, I noticed something strange in the conversations I would have with people I met. Something new started to happen, and it was this. When the conversation invariably turned to, what do you do? I would share that I was studying theology to become a church minister. And once, and once I had explained what this meant, uh, then usually that person would all of a sudden look for the story in their own experience which connected them as closely uh, as they could to the church or to God. Oh, I used to go to Sunday school or my grandparents used to pray with me when I would stay at their place or something along those lines. And they would share that with me. It didn't happen every time, but I was surprised by how often it did occur. There were, of course, those people who you could see this made them feel rather uncomfortable and, and those who just didn't react at all. But here I began to see an interesting approach to sharing faith. If you share a story about your connection to the church, you can then watch to see how the other person or the people you're talking to, how they react. You can see uh, because you can see because of the nature of who God is and the implications of what it means if God exists, uh, the level of openness people have to God. And, and it's often easy to gain an insight into how open to God people are. As Jesus says in John 3, verses 19 to 20, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light, for fear of his deeds will be exposed. For a person to bring uh, uh, to accept God's existence and to bring that acceptance into their conscious mind, this means that they should by right accept that there is a moral authority above themselves which they ought to subordinate to. And as Jesus points out, this is the reason why many people reject God and why and why they will have a completely hard heart to God in their rejection of him. They don't want anything to do with his light shining into the darkness of their hearts and lives because they know that what they are doing is enjoying following their carnal instincts rather than exercising self-control in line with their moral conscience. For some people, accepting Jesus means a lot more and is a lot harder than simply accepting that perhaps God exists. In our Bible reading this morning, Jesus is sharing with a crowd of people a number of parables. And today's reading is the first of these parables and it, and it is the parable of the sower. Jesus hops into a boat near the shore and begins to teach the crowd using these parables. And so he talks about a very common event which would have been very familiar to all of them, and that is the planting of seeds. A farmer goes to sow seeds. Uh, as he is spreading the seed around, some falls on the path. It just sits on the surface and is eventually eaten 
by birds. Some falls on soil which is rocky just underneath the surface. It sinks into what soil is there and begins to grow, but its roots can't break through the rock and are shallow. So as soon as the sun starts to beat down on the plant, it shrivels and up and it dies. Some of the seed falls on good soil, but which has thorns and weeds. The thorns and weeds outgrow the seed and starve it of nutrients and water, so it too eventually dies. But some seed falls on the good soil. It falls on the ground that's been prepared. And this seed grows into a plant which produces fruit and many more seeds. Later on, when Jesus is alone with his disciples, he explains this parable to them, what it means. Those who don't understand and, and reject the message about the kingdom of God are those who the gospel will have no impact on. They are not ready to receive Jesus. And Satan works to try to make sure that it, it has no impact on that person later on. There are those who will accept the gospel at a particular moment in their lives, but they won't really allow it to deeply impact who they are, and they won't allow God to uh, deeply into their hearts and lives to really start to work in them and, and to really transform them, maybe a little bit, but not real deeply. Eventually, they will either drift away or if they suffer uh, any persecution for God's sake, uh, they will abandon their faith. There are those who will accept the gospel and, and have it make a real impact on their lives, but when it comes to trusting God fully, when they can't see it, they don't. They never develop that level of trust in God where they walk by faith. These are those who never progress to being able to trust in God, uh, even though they don't understand how God is going to accomplish his will. So the worries of life and, and the world, or the chasing after their financial security, or chasing after greater wealth, will cause these people to walk away from following God. But then there are those who would accept God with open arms. They will seek to develop a deeper and richer relationship with Him and learn to trust Him with their lives. They allow God into the deep places of their hearts, allowing Him to challenge and transform them. These then will share the gospel with others and help to sow seed in others, producing a harvest. 30, 60, or even a hundredfold. This parable tells us some very important things when it comes to sharing faith. First of all, is that people will be open to hearing and receiving the gospel to varying degrees, and this will be based on a number of different things. Just they might have a natural hardness or openness to God, just innate within them. They may have experiences which either harden or soften their hearts. They might have a family environment which helps to nurture or, or deter them from pursuing a faith in God. But this means that if people don't respond to the gospel, this isn't necessarily because of the way you have shared your faith. It doesn't say that you have necessarily shared your faith in an ineffective or uninviting manner. I mean, when Jesus shared about the kingdom of God, many people rejected him. If Jesus himself couldn't break through the hardness of people's hearts, of some people's hearts, then don't be surprised if you aren't able to break through the hardness of some people's hearts. People reject Jesus. Jesus says in Matthew 5.11, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Jesus doesn't say that because you have failed him when people reject the gospel, when you share it. 
In fact, the opposite is true. Jesus highly commends you for any time you genuinely share your faith with someone and they reject you because they're really rejecting Jesus. So remember that when you share the gospel, you are sharing what Jesus and God has decided to do and say. So when people do reject your attempt to share about Jesus, and it, it will feel like they are rejecting you, because Jesus is such an important part of who you are and by sharing about Jesus, you're putting yourself out there, you're making yourself vulnerable to them. You're revealing that you are a person who has fully accepted the gospel. But a rejection of the gospel when shared is a rejecting of God and his ways. Jesus gives us the responsibility of sharing the gospel in as, in, in as an inviting way as possible not the responsibility of people responding positively to the gospel. Success for us as Christians is to be willing to share the gospel and able to share it in an inviting manner. And failure is to fail to share the gospel in an inviting manner. But the effectiveness of sharing and in creating a positive heart response is it to the Holy Spirit and upon that person themselves? It is not your responsibility. Another aspect of knowing that people will respond to in different degrees to God is that we use this to determine what our best goal might be right now. If you detect that someone is in no way going to listen to anything you've got to say about God, in fact they are hostile to the gospel, maybe, uh, maybe they share a, uh, a horrific story about why they hate God or the church or have come to not believe in him, then maybe just developing a closer relationship with them rather than a full in-depth sharing about your faith in Jesus is what is more appropriate at that time. Because people are not going to remain in a fixed position in their openness or closeness to God, or at least most people won't. Particularly um, if that closeness that they have to God is actually due to uh, a negative or, or even a horrific experience which that's based in. Giving them a positive experience of, of God and God's love can then start to um, work through this and overcome this. And of course, God's Holy Spirit is always going to be at work in people's hearts, trying to soften them. I have heard many people share about a trans, um, share about a transformative negative experience of God. Um, or of, uh, because of the church or of a minister or of a religious school, which has meant that they developed uh, a dislike for, for things associated with Christianity. And sometimes the person, and sometimes I've heard stories where the person really loved God, but they suffered some form of abuse. And geez, these stories really, they really make my heart ache. And, and I feel an anger at the person who destroyed this person's faith. And so it's hard to hear these stories as, as that a faith was sort of taken away from them because of someone. But on the other hand, many people's journey to discovering God comes in the form of an amazing experience of a Christian whose love and, and positive influence brings them to a place where they start to seriously consider God. I've heard many people share of, of how they grew up in a family where, they, where there was no acceptance of God or God was never talked about. But then through a friendship, which meant they were introduced to, to the love of God, started to bring them into a relationship with God and, a, and an acceptance of Jesus. 
Now, what this means is that people can be moved in their openness to God over time or in response to situations they face. Just because someone is unresponsive to the gospel now doesn't mean that they will always be unresponsive to the gospel. In the context of friendship and family, we may find ourselves having to play the long game. But we shouldn't always count on the long game. We shouldn't always believe that, that there will always be more time. We don't always know that. And we shouldn't use someone's resistance to the gospel to never share with them about our faith in Jesus. We should at least make sure that our friends and family who have walked away from God or never known God know what it is or know who it is that they are leaving or rejecting or not believing in. You should still share the gospel in, in as inviting way as you can so that everyone has the best opportunity to respond to Jesus. It's also important to understand that while we can encourage someone in their faith, we cannot make someone choose to trust in God when they go through a hard time or choose to start chasing after wealth instead of God. We cannot make someone remain faithful to God who won't allow God deep into their hearts to challenge and transform them. We cannot make someone understand the beauty of the gospel and receive Jesus into their lives. But there is also another side of the coin when we consider this parable which Jesus told about the sower. And that is about considering your openness to God. Where do you sit in your level of openness to God? Are you willing to give God only a small role in your life? Is he only allow, allowed to have a small influence or impact on you? Are you willing to allow Jesus to put down deep roots in your life and transform your heart? Are you willing to surrender to Jesus your heart's desires? Are you willing to undergo suffering and rejection for Jesus? Are you willing to respond to God's call on you to be to be fishers of men and women and share your faith with others Jesus does point to this as being one of the hallmarks of seed falling into the good soil if you are someone who has never taken sharing your faith as an important aspect of your Christian walk and Christian life or if you have hardly ever managed to muster the courage to share your faith or never been bothered to put in the time and effort that it takes to share faith and, and to walk with someone uh, in encouraging them to, to, to become a Christian and, and to place their faith in Jesus. Or up to now you've stopped short in your own faith in allowing Jesus to change how you live your life and are willing um, and your willingness to become that seed which falls onto good soil and rather have been the seed which has fallen on, on the rocky soil or the seed with the weeds? Or are you willing to allow Jesus to use you even more than you already are? So that he can take you from a seed which produces a crop, maybe five or ten, to become one which produces a harvest. 30, 60 or 100 fold. God is calling you. Wherever you are at in your faith, he's calling you to deepen your faith, to deepen your trust in him and to uh, be willing to step out in greater ways than you have in the past to share your faith. Knowing that there will be those who will respond positively as you share your faith and there will be those who will respond negatively when you share your faith. There will be those who won't even really give any sort of response. But whatever response we get, we are always called to share our faith.
It is a part of what it means to live out our own faith. So let us respond to Jesus and share our faith with those around us to give them the best opportunity to respond to him as well. Amen. Let us come before our God with our prayers for others. Let's pray. Lord our Saviour, we pray for your protection over the lives of all Christians, over our families and over ourselves. We ask for your hand to cover your people and keep and keep us all distanced from the evil intent of the enemy, that you would be a barrier over us and that we would find refuge in you. We pray that you would give your people discernment and insight beyond our years to understand your will, hear your voice and know your ways. We pray this in particular for church leaders around the world. We ask that you would keep the footsteps of all Christians on firm, solid ground, helping us all to be consistent and faithful. Give us supernatural endurance to stay the course, not swerving to the right or to the left, or being too easily distracted by other things that would seek to call us away from a close walk with you. Shine your light in us, through us and over us. May we make a difference in this world for your glory, so that your purposes would stand. Set your way before us. May all your plans succeed. May we, ref may we reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. We praise you and we bless you, O Lord. Thank you that you reign supreme and we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ. Let us therefore with confidence now share with each other in the chat our prayer requests. Let us now pray in our homes for those people and situations people have requested prayer for.
Lord, we pray for all these people and everyone else in our community. Help us to lend a helping hand where we can. We pray for our church community that you would, that you would continue to strengthen and grow us. And we pray for our families and friends that you would keep them safe. We pray also for everyone who does not know you. We ask that they will come to this knowledge of you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, we pray all these things in and through your name. Amen. Let us now share in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We're now going to sing our final hymn this morning, Tell Out My Soul. Let us tell all about the wonderful gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. to love and to serve the Lord, responding to Jesus by giving him your whole heart. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>